Ready in the back? Okay, we'll uh, get a mic for you. We'll start with Wes. Well, I know Theo Jackson's a guy who's been here for a while and has played a lot of ball. Is, are you surprised at all with the way he's started this season? You know, flying around the way he's been making plays? Uh, no. Uh, it, I was just sharing this uh, with someone else. Um, you know, you, you, you win games, obviously not on the weekend. You win them throughout the week. And since we've gotten here, um, when we all got here as a staff, um, off the field has, you know, has been inconsistent with our entire team. And, and some of the things that, that Theo did right from the beginning is, is that his attention to detail was phenomenal. Uh, being on time, being early, being prepared for meetings. And then leading up to spring ball, you know, he was ready for it. Obviously getting on the field, his communication skills were outstanding. Uh, between teammates, uh, and he was productive. He was very productive in our spring. I said that before you uh, in the past uh, when, we, when we talked about the spring. He was consistent from all 15 practices. And then you take it to the summer, same thing, off the field, outstanding, on the field. Um, you can see that his leadership skills is something that uh, he's our leader on our back end uh, in, a, in the secondary, uh, one of our leaders on our team. Uh, he's not afraid to say it. Even when he's wrong, he says he's wrong. Um, he owns up to it, takes ownership. Um, and I, I think the guys feed off of that because it's truth. It's, you know, it's, it's true love. And, uh, and then you take the fall camp, same thing. So the first two games is exactly what we've seen between, you know, Sunday, you know, uh, through Friday, uh, if you want to use a game week. Um, so not surprised, you know. And he'll be the first one to say, just like, you know, I, I, the foot's not off the gas pedal for, for me as a coach. You know, I'm pushing them constantly. Um, you know, I've been blessed to be able to do what I've been doing for a long time because uh, I've been around some really good players that really get it. And uh, when and you've got the right one like him, he's going to make everybody else better on, on, on the uh, in the back end and on the entire team. Jimmy and Eric, Willie, have you been pleased with the communication among your secondary through these first two games? Um, it could be better. I mean, I think uh, for the majority of the time, it's been pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Like I was sharing some thoughts with somebody else. It's not, it's not where it needs to be, you know. Uh, but we've, we've handled, obviously, the, the, like this last ball game, um, you know, Pitt had tempo. Obviously, we see tempo every day. That wasn't an issue. It was mainly, um, you know, where you got different types of tools to use and, and when you're going to make adjustments and stuff and not being on the same page with the tools that you're given to as you practice throughout the week. And uh, it could be cleaner. Um, if it was cleaner on Saturday, I think we would have played better. But that starts with me, and uh, and I got to make sure that, that that's relayed through the players. And and uh, but you know they played they played really hard the first two ball games from start to finish. Um, can it be better? Absolutely. How's some of the depth behind your your starting five out there kind of coming along the uh, the safeties and of course the the, the newcomers at cornerback? Yep. Um, we need more, you know, we've, we've kept as a staff defensively, we're saying we got to play more guys and we do, you know, a guy can go out there and play 80 something reps, you know, but there's a trust factor too, you know, is he, is he ready? Is he ready to, you know, this game was tight this last ball game. And, and for the most part, the first ball game was too early on, you know, and, and you're going to put the guys on there that have earned it and, uh, and have proven it in practice. And you're a little bit, you're a little bit slow to go ahead and substitute somebody, but we have to. Uh, we got to play more guys. There's no doubt about it. And it's getting better. You know, you get guys like Christian Charles and and uh, T Mac. Um, you know, Nico uh, Slaughter. You know, that are playing outstanding on special teams. And that's how we tell them all the time. We tell them that's how you earn. You guys that are not starting on on a defensive side of the ball, you earn your reps by being outstanding and being playmakers on you know on special teams. And we got to get those guys going and give them more reps. Um, in these coming weeks. We're going to need it. Yeah, Coach, you said it yourself. You know, you've been – oh, right here. Coach. Yeah. You said it yourself. You know, you've been around. you coached a lot of different places. You know, what – how does that affect, you know, the way that you're coaching uh, Tennessee secondary right now? How does it affect? Yeah. I think that the experience that I've had has helped me, uh, obviously, different types of kids, different type of personalities, um, how to coach someone. You know, that's the whole key is not everybody is going to, you know, hear it the same way and not everybody's going to get it. Uh, it's going to be more visual probably for the most part. Uh, Walkthroughs, um, the communication has to be uh, where you got to understand how does he learn? How does someone learn? How does he take critique? Um, you know, there's guys that are really talented but just not mature enough in the process or understand the process, what it takes 
um, and obviously the experiences help you to deal with the different types of personalities, um, you know, through the years. No turnovers, obviously. I'm curious to know what the is the reaction. Frustration, anxious. What? How do you? How do you guess? Look at that. Yeah, I don't think it's frustration. Um, you know, the thing that we teach every day is obviously the best thing you can do on defense is get a turnover because that just kills the momentum of an offense. Um, you know, uh, and and we're working on it. It's not like we don't do it. We have turnover circuit every day. Um, you know, it's it's uh, from a coaching standpoint, you got to tell them and show them the schemes that that are very consistent in what formations do they run certain plays out of to get yourself in the position where if we do have a call that you could be a little bit more aggressive, you know, you got, you got all those things. But at the end of the day, we've got to be able to come through. I think we're working at it. I think we're showing, you know, we're, we're, we're doing the things that we need to do to get them in position to do that. And then you just got to follow through with it. You know, the one thing that, that uh, will help you, we've had some really good sudden change situations. Basically, it's not a turnover, but to be able to change the momentum and stop an offense after a turnover I think that's the start of something that we keep on, you know, sharing with them and showing them that the positives of it. It's just like a, a momentum changer. We just got to we got to get the ball now. There's no doubt about it. Just through two games, how would you evaluate Trayvon Flowers and, and Jalen McCullough? Um, I, I think they've done a really good job as far as uh, the communication part that I was talking about earlier. It's uh, obviously two guys that have a tremendous amount of experience. Um, uh, you know, they'll be the first ones to tell you they can play better. I think they've played. In majority, in the majority of the time, they played well, but there were times, you know, where they could be better, and the entire secondary can be better, especially when it comes to tackling. Okay, uh, we're space. You know, we like to say we're space eaters. You know, you got to be able to make plays in space, and uh, and they'll be the first ones to tell you that they could have, they could have made some plays. You know, Saturday that, that uh, could have helped us, whether it's one play or, uh, or two or three. You know, but uh, I think it's been outstanding. I think the guys look up to them. Um, they're versatile enough to be, you know. Uh, play both sides, whether it's to the field or to the boundary, or um, and play their strengths. Coach, you, you mentioned the trust factor and in terms of playing younger guys. How do you know when a guy's ready? I mean, the game's not a game of perfection anyway. How do you as a coach go, okay, he's ready to go into the situation? What, what's that moment? I, I think at the, the – the, it's going to be the daily process, you know, how he goes about his business each and every day, whether it's academics, whether it's uh, weight training, uh, you know, the, the, the effort that they're put in, everything that they do, you know, everything matters, everything is important. How you do anything is how you'll do everything, so to speak, you know what I mean? So it's the accountability part. Number two, it's when they're given the opportunity, Okay, and they step on the field at practice and they're given those reps, whether it's in one on one, whether it's in seven on seven or in 11 on 11 situations that they produce, that they make plays, that they know exactly what to do and, and they're productive in a consistent basis, you know, and, and hold on it, you know, hold on to, this, uh, uh, to be consistent in doing it day in, day out. And again, the, the part that I just shared with about Christian and T-Mac and Slaughter, the confidence is just continually you can see it when they're given her. Nico went in there and played six snaps on defense to give uh, Theo uh, a blow. It, it, I mean, I felt very confident. Put him in there, and he did an outstanding job. No one's going to say anything. No one's brought him up in the six plays that he had. But five out of the six plays, he actually did an unbelievable job that really allowed, you know, kind of forced plays to somebody else. So he was accountable. He knew exactly what to do. And I think a lot of it, too, is his success on special teams led to his confidence building and the practice, you know, practice throughout the week. Brian? That's all right. <laughs> Can you evaluate what you've seen from your corners in Alante Taylor and Warren Burrell, including how they've graded out in your opinion? I think, it, I think, uh, I think there's been some times where they've been very solid um, and for the most part, but I think that there's also plays that they're leaving out there. You know, it, it starts with me as a coach and trying to identify and show them what I mean by that. But also, too, like, like uh, uh, I said earlier, they've got to they've come through, you know, in the moments when they when can't have a missed tackle. Can't, you know, when the ball's in the air and a 50-50 ball, you know, that's why you basically are playing corner to win those moments. And uh, I think that uh, we could be better. They can be better. They'll be the first ones to tell you that. Um, but they're one of our, you know, obviously, you know, two of the best players on our defense. And, uh, 
and, and they've made plays. You know that obviously the play that uh, Warren makes late in the, in, in the game in the fourth quarter when they throw the deep ball and and uh, that's a big time play. You know gave us another chance to give the ball back to the offense. You know for a chance to win the game. So um, they could be better. I was going to ask specifically on Alante, but, but back to the turnovers. Have you seen some, have there been on film some missed opportunities to get some turnovers? Or is it, do you see that, that just overall you guys have maybe not just been in position so far to, to make some plays? I'm not saying that we haven't been in position, you know. I don't think anybody's really, I mean, yeah, we're going to be hard as coaches. To, you touch the ball with your hands, you know, you got to come up with it, you know. I just gave an example of a 50-50 ball is your other chances, you know. You you know, you, it can't be the 50-50 ball, like I say all the time, you know, an offensive play. Everybody keeps talking about as an offensive player, the 50, he's really good in the 50-50 ball. Well, the DB's got to be really good in the 50-50 ball. He's got to be able to chance you right there, make a play. And uh, you, how do you win that? You know, you're, you're on the jugs every day, like we do every day in practice. You know what I mean? Um, they have a certain amount of balls that they have to catch every day. Um, and then, then some more. Go get some more. You know, get yourself in a position when you do have that opportunity, that one chance, You've gone it in your mind. You've given yourself enough confidence that you'll catch the ball when the, when the time comes, you know. Um, you know, so I think there's been a handful of times that I think at those times, I think the ball should have been come down with us, you know. I'm going to be tougher than I am, uh, and, you know, on them than, than, than most. Uh, but I think they've been in the, in the position as far as if we're playing zone coverage. I don't think anybody's flat out just dropped the ball, uh, uh, you know, where it's a missed opportunity. I mean, uh, maybe once or twice, you know what I mean, in the, in the two games. But I think preparation will meet opportunity, you know. And we, that's, what we're, that's why I co you know, I'm a coach, and i got to get those guys in a position where, you know, here's, here's what they do. This is what they do a lot on third down or third and medium or third and long, and here's the call. This is where you take your chance. This is where you, they're going to run this, you know. And, uh, but they're working at it. They really are. And, and there's sometimes they come in bunches, and sometimes, you know, you do everything you can, and, and uh, you see a lot of great defense throughout – you know, I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't want to name them, but I mean, where they've had actually less than half the guys that win the turnover battles, you know. Um, but uh, this is definitely something that we continue to stress and talk about, and, uh, um, and hopefully we'll get some, you know, sooner than later, you know. Last question, Gene. Willie, when your cornerbacks are playing well, does that allow you to be more aggressive on defense? Yeah, we're going to be aggressive anyways, but yes. I mean, you, you, you know, the, Nowadays on defense, you have to be able to play man-to-man -man with everybody. I mean, safety's included, you know, your nickel back. And, and, uh, and any time you, you put yourself in a one-on-one -on -one situation where you can dominate a receiver or receivers, it allows you to do so much more. And uh, where you can change it up with some zone coverage, same look, and get yourself where you can actually see now more, be more vision on the quarterback, the quarterbacks that can run athletic, they can break the pocket. You know, Pickett was like that. You know, that's somebody that – did an outstanding job, broke containment and stuff like that, and he was really good off schedule. We knew that from going from the game. We knew he was very talented. We knew he'd be a guy to be tough, competitive, and um, but you have to be able to play man when you have to. Yes, it gives it allows you to do more. Thank you, coach. Yes.